don't know what it. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to What's Sewing On. So for today's video, I am so excited. I can't even contain it. <sighs> Today I'm so excited. I'm going to be starting my contribution for historical Halloween 2020. Two fellow YouTubers, Kira Lee Cosplay and Lady Rebecca Fashions, who I will also link down below, ended up creating this collaboration slash challenge called Historical Halloween 2020. So this wasn't my planned video for this week, but I couldn't pass up on a historical or a Halloween costume so I had to try to figure out what I was going to do. I was looking all over Pinterest and I was looking on the internet, but nothing really jumped out of me, so I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. So I went to a local thrift store and I saw these curtains and I immediately thought of this gown. I don't know if anybody else has a useless superpower, but mine is association. Basically, I can look at something and immediately it can remind me of something else. So I could see a person, a movie, a place, art, a voice, anything like that, and I can immediately tell you what that reminds me of and it's usually very accurate. It's kind of weird and it's completely useless, but apparently it's helping me out a lot with sewing and costuming. So I saw this curtain panel and I immediately thought of this 1880s bat gown costume. So this gown was featured in a magazine in 1892 and I ended up finding the page on the internet where it was featured so I was able to see a little bit of a description. By looking at it I assumed that it was all black and that the pinstripes in the skirt were actually gathers. But as soon as I saw this curtain panel, I immediately thought of this dress and I thought it would be a cool way to show those gathers in actual stripe form because technically we don't know what color the dress actually is because it's just a drawing. It's a fashion plate. We're not really sure. And if you look at this picture that somebody did, obviously years and years ago, she made a completely gray silver dress. So you know what? I'm going to use these curtains and I think it's going to, hope it's going to look pretty cool. While I was planning it out in my head, I figured I'm going to do kind of that skirt floofy part as one piece, the bodice as a separate piece, and obviously the bat wings or something that goes on after. So for the drawstring bottom layer of the dress, I'm going to use Simplicity Renaissance, this A pattern. For the bodice, I'm going to be using Simplicity 9163, which I actually did for the bell dress. Again, I'm not going to be doing the zigzags. I'm only going to be using this for the bodice and I'm not gonna put sleeves on it. I don't know how that's gonna work, but we're gonna give it a shot. So there is a lot to do with this costume and I don't really know where I should start. So I'm just gonna start with the skirt and go from there. So I'm going to show you guys that curtain panel and we're gonna get cutting. For the drawstring skirt, I'm going to be using a black bed sheet that I got while thrifting and I have some white cording that I just had lying around the house, so I think that will work. If you don't have the same Renaissance simplicity pattern, I'm sure any drawstring skirt would work for this or even a simple zippered skirt. super wrinkly and I attempted to steam it here and gave up immediately. For the skirt ruffles, I cut long strips about eight inches wide. On one side, I hemmed it a quarter of an inch and on the other side, I basted the top so I could create gather to make it more roughly. side and I pinned that to the bottom of the skirt, also pinning the top gathered part and then I sewed that completely around the dress and I repeated that four more times until I got to the waistband.
last step was to make the draping across the waist on top of the skirt. Basically, I just cut a long strip of fabric, I ruffled that together, pinned it where I wanted it, and sewed it onto the waistband. For the bodice, I just followed the directions on the pattern, and I added in extra boning along the side seams. zipper to the back of the bodice and that completed the bodice. For the bat wings I thought I had purchased a duvet cover but it actually ended up just being a sheet with one shiny side and one cotton side so I only had one piece of fabric to work with. pieces and then just sew along the inside, flip them inside out and then create channels. Since I only had the one piece of fabric and I didn't have enough to make a double layer, I ended up making tubes out of the extra fabric and then I just pinned those in place where I wanted the boning to go and I sewed those down. For the boning I used zip ties, I just cut them to the length I wanted and then inserted that into the channel or tubing. The finishing steps were to create the bat for the bodice and the two for the shoes. They're made out of masking tape, paper, and some fabric for the wings, and I painted them all black. I avoided the bat headdress because it's creepy AF and I am not messing with that abomination. ball now. I'm actually really happy with the way it turned out. I really like this dress. The skirt was a lot of work with all the ruffles, but I think it was worth it. If I had some more time, I would have probably fixed the draping around my waist just because I find it's a bit uneven. I had no idea what it was called. I didn't know how to do it, so I just winged it and it didn't turn out too terrible, but I definitely want to find a pattern that I can use and try it again. At least they're there and they're represented. I'm going to be linking the playlist for the historical Halloween 2020 down below so make sure you go check out everybody else's work. A lot of time and effort and work goes into these costumes so it's great if everyone gets to see them so make sure you check out that playlist below. I'm very impressed with the way this turned out. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. Did I make mistakes? Oh hell yes. I made a lot of mistakes. It's great that it's black, so it's kind of forgiving, so you can't see all of them. 
but I'm still super happy with the way it turned out. I think it's very similar to the fashion plate that I was using as a reference for somebody who just started sewing a few months ago and I had absolutely no idea how to make this dress and now I'm wearing it and it's pretty darn similar and I'm pretty happy with it. I keep learning more and more and I think that's what I love the most about it and it just goes to show you if you want to try something like this, if you want to make something like this, you definitely can. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and I hope you subscribe. I'll be putting out my Halloween craft video on Friday so I will see you guys in my next video. That's how they used to dance. The little baddies are a little terrifying, but you know what? They were supposed to be there, so I put them there. Taking a bit filming. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> See you.